Uh, he's just, he's fought three champions uh, recently of the world, and in the last one he fought the, the feared Alfred Cody in well 12 rounds, and never looked at any stage like he was going to go out. Now, it would be a real feather in, in Hammett's cap if he could stop this guy inside the distance, and that's what he'd be looking to do. That, but there's right. no doubt this guy f is, uh, is going to put up real opposition. He's seen it all as well. He's been very much around the boxing block as this fellow. He's nearly 32 now, Armando Castro. Was very confident at the weigh-in. But Nassim Hamed, it's part of his a world tour really here tonight. And he's got great support here. The Scots have taken this little fella. Very much so, yeah. This is his year. He feels this is the year he can win a world title. And he'll want to do it in 95. Well, it's a small arena here, but it's tightly packed. And he's done the PR really well up here. Very impressive appearance on the local chat show, Kirsty, last night. And when he emerges from the pack, you will see he was wearing, he is wearing a kilt. Or not at the moment, perhaps, perhaps he's going to put that on a little bit later on. But uh, he's been so relaxed. There's the kilt behind him. He's been so relaxed here. He's loving every moment of his entry. And this, I'm sure, is the start of a year that will see Prince Nassim Ahmed champion of the world. He started his last fight slowly. His trainer behind me, Brendan Ingle, said to me today that... If Castro comes forward, he can well knock him out in one. And there's the Morrison kilt, they tell me, in these parts. But I'm sure Nassim Ahmed will be donning in the very near future. A very different sort of fighter. For my money, the most exciting young man in not only British, but world boxing today. So many people in recent months have come up to me and said, how good is this little guy? What do you think, Barry? Oh, he's extremely talented. He's incredible. His awesome uh, technique, his reflexes are incredible. And uh, he punches really, really hard. His balance is incredible. He's just, uh, he's got it all. One of the most exciting fighters we've seen in many, many years. He's a decent little mover as well. Scottish fans here are loving every second. And now, how is he going to get into the ring? Has he got something special prepared for us now? The great thing about him is that he does all this. And when he gets out of fighting as well, he is very, very special. Well, alongside me, I've got Barry McGuigan, MBE, and our commentary team. Jim Watt, MBE as well. And Reg Guthrie just awarded the OBE. Reg, very well done from us all. Let's join the MC, Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is sanctioned and conducted under the rules of the WBC International Championship Committee with their supervisor at ringside, Mr. Ribbonet Nibbereed of London, the British Boxing Board of Control Supervisor, Dr. Shay of Glasgow. The judges at ringside appointed by the WBC, Mr. Adrian Morgan of Cumbran, Wales, and Mr. John Keane from Northampton. The referee in charge of tonight's action, who also scores the contest, Mr. Mickey Van from Leeds. The timekeeper appointed is Mr. Jim Russell of Glasgow, and the matchmaker, Mr. Ernie Fossey of Hertfordshire. Ladies and gentlemen, Saturday night is Big Fight Night, live and exclusive on ITV. From the SECC Glasgow, where our promoters Frank Warren for Sports Network in association with Kathleen Morrison and sponsored by William Martin Marine proudly present a contest of 12 
three minute rounds to decide the WBC International Super Bantamweight Championship. Introducing the boxers in the red corner, wearing the red and green trunks from Mexico City. From his 62 fight professional record, he has 43 wins, 38 coming by way of KO, 16 losses and three draws. The former undefeated Mexican champion and a former WBC international champion. Will you please welcome Amanda Castro? And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, wearing the leopard skin trunks from Sheffield and the Yellen, remains undefeated in the 15 contests. 13 wins by way of KO. The current European bantamweight champion and WBC international superweight bantam champion, Prince Nazim Ahmed. <laughs> At the official weigh in, Castro scale, 8 stone, 10 pounds. Ahmed, 8 stone, 9 pounds. 12 ounces, the WBC International Super Bantamweight Championship. Well, there it is, and all the trimmings are over, and uh, certainly the, the frills as usual coming from uh, Hamed now, but he's, he's certainly beginning to uh, convince a lot of non-believers, and for a while it was, I was among them that uh, he could fight or not. It looks like he can. He's been in a gymnasium since he was a schoolboy, practically. He loves the game. Uh, not, not like uh, maybe Chris Eubank, who says he doesn't. This fellow does all the showmanship, and he's made the crossover now, hasn't he, between the boxing and the show business, but the, the people either like, they may want to see him wax. There's always a Billy the Kid around the corner in this game. But uh, others admiring his skill, and he's got that extra dimension of this will to win by the look of it. And he certainly shoots from the lip. Been around, obviously, Castro. Fought six world champions, actually. He's won against four of them. But uh, his last fight with Alfred Cote from the Ghana WBO Championship, uh, well, he didn't really get much of a look in with that one. So now, let's see what Hamed can do. Has absolutely no occupational fear at all. Jim, you know, we've, you particularly, we've been around long enough to watch fighters. He, nothing upsets this boy. He's so natural before a fight. He's, there's no tension. Well, fighters like Muhammad Ali, Roberto Duran, Ray Leonard, they all have supreme confidence, but nobody was any more confident than this young fellow. Uh, whether he'll reach the same heights as those uh, other people remains to be seen, but he certainly is special. And I tell you, Jim, I'm sure he takes a good punch. Oh dear, his legs there, have you noticed right. that? He, he, he might go out the opening round, this fellow, his legs went stiff on him there. It's a short, jolting little hook, bang in the chin. He's been watching tapes of him, Hamad. He says, I know how I'm going to do this guy. So you have to remember, Castro, most of oh. his work's been done as a super flyweight Reg. He might just not be big enough for Hamed. There's no point in waving him on. That doesn't sound smart move to me. If Hamed wanted him out, Reg, he would knock him out now. They were teasing each other a bit at the way, and it wasn't nasty at all. In fact, it was fairly amusing. And Hamed would, uh, wanted to have a wager with this fellow's manager. He said, you seem to be braver than your fighter. I'll take your money. And he wouldn't go for it. Comes Cash from Los Angeles. Red. Hamed recovered. No, no he's got no balance at all. He's still shaking from that punch. Hamed doesn't want to knock him out. He's just standing off. He looks a bit shocked, one, doesn't he? Oh, look at that. Oh, dear, oh, dear. This one's not going. Nicky Van's going to tell him stop all this wavy gone nonsense and pulling him behind the, the head. Castro's legs have gone, Reg. His legs have not recovered from that first lot. The jolting hook caught him bang in the chin and he hasn't recovered. Well, I hope he's understood all that. He, he lives in California, this guy. I say he was treading on cotton wool there, Jim, wasn't it, the Mexican? Yeah, you can see his movements, Reg. His legs have not recovered. That punch is really shaking him up. He hasn't thrown the effects. Hamed's just toying with him here. I think if he wanted to finish this, he could do it with one shot. See, he, he, he boxes with so much heavier guys in the gym, and I mean, he's even been with a heavy, in him with a heavyweight for a while. Didn't please Brendan Ingle. I think he pulled him out. He didn't want any rough stuff there. See, Castro, as I say, up until a couple of years ago, he was still a super flyweight, so I just don't think he has the strength. 
It's going to take a special fighter even at this stage to beat Hamed. And Castro is not that red. And you've got to catch him first too, Jim. I mean, this, this, this guy so far anyway certainly can back up every boast. But and to be fair to him, Jim, he's quite a modest fellow out of the ring. He's, he does this as a bit of an act and loves every bit of it, by the way. We'll have to remember, Reg, this is a fellow who's just done 12 rounds for the world title. And Hamed is just playing with him here. Yeah, Cody couldn't take him out. Years ago, Jim, he thought, fought the great Thailander, didn't he? Galaxy. Well, it's almost like a stroll back to the opposite, Nazim Hamid. As I was saying, he once got in the, in the gym with a, with a heavyweight for a while. He, incidentally, he, he was the man who did, took a liberty with you Coronation Street fans and gave poor old Jack Cutlerford a black eye. It was Adam Fogarty. Well, you're all trying to make up your mind about this one, and sometimes we do, to be exact, Jim and I. We've seen a few around. I mean, he's so unusual, but he digs hard, and I'm convinced he takes one. I mean, it's just, uh, well, we know he has power, Reg, but he's not even trying here. Just bang, out comes a punch. There it goes. From that point on, Castro didn't know quite where he was. I don't know if he'll recover in the, the interrounds here. I hope so. Seconds. That little short shot, bang on the chin, bang. From that point, second on, round, he was an automatic two. pilot. Second round, then. And, uh, well, he need, had a kneel prayer in the corner there, Castro. I think he's going to need it. And as I said, it'll only help him if he can fight at this stage. He might get over that punch. He's been around a long time, but uh, it looks as though some of those punishing fights with uh, the, one of the Galaxy twins in Thailand years ago, and he looked the part then, Castro. Starting to catch up with him, judging by the opening round. See, Hamed's punching is so precise, he doesn't even have to set himself. His natural power from any angle, the punches are solid. Yeah, he doesn't like about when he's punching, Jim. I'll give him credit for that. Super bantamweight, that between bantam and feather. It's the H stone 10 division. Complaining there about Hamed leaning on his shoulders, pulling him down. He's got a lot of natural strength too, Hamed, isn't he? Beautifully trained. Seen more fat on a butcher's apron than that. Well, we know Castro won't give up. I mean, he's trying to get himself back into things here. But already, they look different leagues altogether. Never thought we'd say that, Jim, really, about him. Well, as Barry McGuigan was saying, this, this fellow is a threat, but he, he hasn't shown any at the moment. Well, in his last few fights, Reg, he's faced two men who have gone 12 rounds for world titles, and he has just toyed with them. It's a bit of a catcher at the moment, Castro, isn't he? A bit of a goalkeeper, Jim, he's stopping everything. doesn't even look, look close to catching Hamid with him. No. That was more of a stumble, yeah, quite yeah. late referee ban. He still caught him with a punch though, Jim, he fell over himself, but some referees just might have given that as a count. A little bit of a shove at the end anyway. Oh, dear, oh dear. he leapt off the floor. Now there he shoved him again, but he did land the punch, but yes, he did shove him with that one. See, he's got a great defence mechanism, Hamid. When he lands a punch, if the opponent's still in, he pushes him so he can't come back with a count. These are good shots. He digs, he digs. Punches from all angles. It's all over by the shouting gym, surely. Yeah, I think as soon as he likes Reg, this one's over. Here, oh dear, he picks him off, Jim, just his either hand, that awkward southpaw stance, the way he sways away from punches, Hamid. He just nodded to him there, Hamid, to say, how did you like that? Incidentally, that uh, white spot in front of the gum shield that Hamid had, which I refer to as a bit of a Brewer rabbit look, in, uh, in all fairness, is actually the painted flag of uh, Yemen on there. And he said, I've also got one in red, white and blue for when I fight 
if I want to, for the British Championship. So uh, that answers that one. Here it is again, Jim. Mohamed set himself a couple of times for shots. And you can see even the difference in power when he sets himself. Now, that, that was a punch and a kind of half push. I think the referee did the right thing, not counting a, a knockdown. But when he lands a punch, if the opponent's still there, he has the strength just to push him aside. Well, he's been with this fellow Brendan England since he was a schoolboy. The story about him spotting him up on the top of a bus in the school playground, ducking and diving, getting away from a gang of boys that were trying to hit him, and he laughed and said, I'd like to manage him, and he is. He's got, a, he's got an old team in the corner with him there, Castro, but it becomes the loneliest place in the world when that bell goes for this fellow. Can his experience now just get him over this rough passage? And it's certainly been that. He's hardly landed a worthwhile punch, really, the Mexican. His legs still don't look right, Reg. I don't know if it's just that the punch he took in the first round or if it's maybe all the previous fights, because that punch landed so early in the first, it's difficult to say. But his legs certainly don't look right, the way he's moving around. He's moaning too, Castro, but a bit hammered pulling him. He'll fight till he drops the Mexican, that's for sure. incredible with the, with Hamlet really I mean sometimes we think that maybe bravado camouflage is fear a bit but uh, not in this fella's case that's the fact that men who have contested world title fights uh, within a couple of months they're going with Hamid and he's just totally different class Jim he's looking very vacant there as, as we're looking up at uh, Castro's eyes while the referee Mickey Van is talking to him there. It's his legs, Reg, and his movements. Yeah, you can see not cope with it. It's crazy calling him on. Oh dear, oh dear. He might have an iron jaw, but not for long. Well, Hamed had told us five rounds, Reg. I think he's just wasting some time, but I don't even think he can go five. Well, it's, it's become target practice, which is a word that Hamid uses a lot for opposition. Oh dear, oh dear. I suppose bravery you can admire in many ways, but it's a, it's a foolish trait here for the Mexican. He knows Hamid clowns around a bit, he's trying to do some, but he's taking stick while he's doing it, he's really shipping punishment. I mean, he's hardly landed a punch, he no, doesn't even look close to landing a punch. His legs are all over the place, Jim, let's see how his, his toes turn in when he leads with a punch. Yeah, either that right hand, uh, that little jab in the, the first minute, has done that in his previous fights, but he's certainly not right. Oh dear, well if that was the alley shuffle, it's the worst impersonation I've seen. Oh, oh, oh I see, he, he wants to take over the clown spot. Well, to Castro's credit, he's taken some uh, wax since the, the first round, not going over, but uh, I mean, this is just nonsense. Out for the third round, then. And it looks as though Castro's experience has been totally... Uh, fourth round, I should say. Oh, dear, don't say we're going to have a power cut in the middle of this. There's been problems, of course, with the flooding some time ago now. Well, recently, really, in, uh, in Glasgow. And uh, power problems. Oh, dear. Well, that's, that is a knockdown and no shove. Gets the man a eight, and he will need it. And I've got a feeling this now will be the beginning of the end. That's like... The rock of the landslide that's going to come. You see, Castro's never faced a guy like this. There's nobody has, obviously. We realise that now. He's got all the time in the world now in this round, Jim. He's done it at the start of the round. Well, he knows he has the power to do it with one single shot. There it, there it is. is. It's all over, I think, yes. 
Oh, he's doing, he shouldn't have done that. He's given him the standing count, no, and he's done really. the somersault. Well, not really, Reg, because his backside was on the ropes. The ropes yeah. were stopping him going over, so technically the referee can call that a knockdown. Yeah, it's but I'm saying count. that Hamid thought the fight was over and did his somersault premature. Imagine if he'd have ripped an ankle at that stage, he would have been in trouble. Passes have nothing to offer since that first shot in the first round. Yeah. This looks like the end now. Yeah, the referee will do him a favour now, get in as soon as he can. He knows he's going. And Mickey Van there, he's getting right on top of him too. He realises that he might want to have to step in. It's a foolish bravery, and it's all over in the fourth round. And there is the official somersault, of course. And it had to happen. I mean, he just totally outclassed this guy. And you can understand Frank Warren saying, see, you've done it again. And he's, he's due to fight Jimmy Bredall, the Dane, uh, probably in Dublin on March the 4th for the European Bantamweight Championship defence. And there, as I was saying, is that painted gum shield there of uh, Hamid. And... Uh, well, Castro's corner, believe it or not, are arguing that their man was stopped a bit prematurely. In fact, it was a compassionate act. And there's Dad Sal with Hamid. And, uh, well, the whole of the Hamid, uh, I nearly said clan, is it's in Scotland now. Regiment, they look outside. Here's the first knockdown now, Jim. Yeah, see, one single punch and he's over. That's the natural power. He doesn't have to set himself for punches. The power is there. We haven't learned anything new about Hamed uh, for this performance, but uh, just in a real state of what we already knew. Tremendous power, tremendous talent. He's doing exactly as he pleases with a fellow who has just finished facing a world champion. Incredible. See, he would have gone over here if that rope hadn't kept him up. That was the reason Mickey Van could step in and give him a count. Technically, it would have been a knockdown. But see, nothing to offer here. Legs gone completely. Hadn't landed a punch since the first round. He only landed one punch in the whole of the, the four rounds. And you agree with the referee, Jim? Yes, definitely, definitely. Obviously, I wouldn't mind him going in a bit earlier if he had to. Well, there it is. He boasts a bit, but he can bang a bit as well. 52 seconds of the fourth round, the referee has stopped the contest. The, the international championship is uh, supposed to be for those not rating in the top Super ten, but then it gets them in the, the top rankings. Sixteenth on the turn, fourteenth knockout or stoppage, and he'll melt the crowd. And I must say, the Scots have liked him up here. They've, they've been amused by some of his antics. Yeah, he's certainly doing his best to upstage Chris Eubank. Yeah, Dad's a bit pleased with himself as well, there, isn't he? All the family leading the cheerleaders here, but the, as I said, the Scottish crowd have, have liked uh, Hamed. He's, he's had a good press, he's been on the chat shows. And now he's in another chat show, and let's hope Gary Newborn can get a word in sometime. Uh, Naz, what's it, Naz? You're keeping me waiting. Come on. Sorry about this, Gary, but. Uh... You know you saw the skill for yourself. Now you got a bit cheeky, that's why it didn't go in five, it went in four. Now you can't tell me that one spewed it and all, can you, Gaza? I thought you were in tremendous form tonight. That guy's never actually been stopped by anything else but cuts, and he's been in with eight world champions. But I got a feeling at one stage you were waiting for that fifth round product, fifth round pr prediction, because you were in command from well, the time you rocked him in the first round with a left hook, and he never recovered. Of course, I'm unique. You've got to know this, Gary. More time to the Mexican section. But all I've got to say is, I know I'm the best, and Gary, you know that was a great performance. But he got a bit cheeky. So who to say that he went in fifth round? Yeah, he was gonna go in fifth round. I'm sorry if I lost people some money. But he got a bit cheeky. Frank Warren and wanted him done early. And uh, let's just say... Okay, well, this was the end, really, although it stopped afterwards. It was this knockdown that finished it off. All right, I'm sure this is a right hand. Oh, the right hand's coming up, I think. 
see. Oh, baby. There it is. I think that one what really done the damage. But the Wombas before that, look at them uppercuts and hooks. Yeah. He's gone. All the cheek beforehand, yeah. saying, come forward, let's have it. Now, now yeah, your, your parents, give. your dad's just back here from the Yemen. The president of Yemen has given you a present this week. Tell the viewers what it is. I'm going to say these sports convertible when I get it. I'm definitely getting it. I know that. Now, I think he wants to give me three after this fight. OK, next fight, European title against Johnny Breedle of Denmark. He's not going to have any chance, is he? I, don't, I think he's a runner, basically. And if he runs, he's gonna, definitely going to get knocked out. I can't see any of them. Definitely. I can't see any of them beating me. Look, you've seen a come forward fighter. You've seen what I did to him. I break him, break him down, take him out, Gazza. That's what I'm very good at. I'm convinced. Great performance. Good night. Good night, viewers, because you know I'm champ.